By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Deventer, the Netherlands for the Knights of Thorn Championships. And we have reached episode number six. And in episode number six, we see Remco playing a very cool and interesting deck, Underworld Dreams with white and blue and black. It's very interesting. He's doing some cool things, including playing with Cleansing, a card from the dark, but more about that in the deck decks. And he's taking on Ron, and we've seen Ron before here in the series. He's playing a Line to Dip Bolt. So it's burn, burn, burn the place down, I guess. Uh, but before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that you can also choose to skip the deck decks, go to the games first, check out the deck decks later. I know some people prefer to do it that way. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. And if you click on there, it'll take you straight to your game action. And in the same description below, you can also find more information about the rule set. We are playing Swedish rules today, meaning no fallen empires. Um, no mana burn and only one strip mine. So I think those are the most important things. But again, if you want to know more about the rules, check out the description below. And in that same description, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And that is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you uh, enjoy the content that I make, consider, please uh, consider becoming a patron of the show. It already starts for just $1 a month. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Remco. Let's have a look at this Underworld Dream. Dreams deck. And here we see the deck of Remco. Now, when I saw this, I mean, I instantly fell in love with the cleansings in here. I love it when players like bring a card to the table that hardly sees any play. And I mean, it's really cool to have a deck where you play Underworld Dreams, which is three black to cast in, in a deck with cleansing, which is three white to cast. I mean, that, that's kind of insane, isn't it? But I do see the synergy here. Maybe let's first just quickly have a peek at Cleansing and then I'll explain where I kind of see the connection between Cleansing and Underworld Dreams. So Cleansing is a sorcery from the dark for three white that basically reads for each land, destroy that land unless any player uh, pays one life. So it's an Armageddon, but you can pay a life to prevent it. Now, when you also play with Underworld Dreams, Underworld Dreams being, of course, this enchantment for three black that reads whenever your opponent draws a card, he or she takes a damage. It means that if you can get an early Underworld Dreams out, your opponent is probably going to be under stress. You know, it's taking a lot of damage. And then later in the game, you play your Cleansing, and they're probably not in a position where they can just save all their lands because they're too low on life. And uh, here, Remco also has Ivory Towers in his deck. So his plan is probably to have a lot of life, right? So he can just easily pay the life for the Cleansing, and he's okay. Um, what's interesting with this deck, and this may be something that I would have done uh, different, but I mean, I've never played a deck like this, so, you know, but just at first glance is he is playing with two creatures in the deck, two Dancing Scimitars, and Dancing Scimitar is a great blocker, uh, four to cast for a 1-5 flyer. Um, it's good, you know, the downside is it's Arabian Nights, and it's also an artifact, so it's usually really easy to get rid of with, like, Sydney in a bottle, Disenchant, um, you know, if your opponent plays white, you can have to deal with Divine Offerings, you know, and your opponent gains four life, that feels really bad. But I mean, apart from that, it's a 1-5 for 4 flying, so it's really good to block. Um, but my point here is, those are the only two creatures, and I would be tempted to just take them out, maybe replace them with two more Wrath of Gods, or two more Mazes of If, and really go creatureless. Now, I'm sure, Remco, you thought about this, so I would love to hear your, your thought process behind adding these two creatures to your board. And talking about Wrath of God, we do see a single Wrath, which I think really belongs in here. We also see an Abyss, and of course, Abyss goes together really well with Dancing Scimitar because it's an artifact creature. So there's some synergy there as well. Then um, what I also love here, because he's playing with a little bit of blue, right? He's playing Ancestral Recall and Time Twister. Time Twister being really good in combination with the Underworld Dreams, of course. Um, he's playing with the Recall, which I understand, a Brain Geyser. So basically just to draw more cards. Um, and a little bit of counter magic, and that's what I want to talk about. Mana, mana Drain, of course, being an auto-include, I guess, even though it's too blue. So that could be a bit tricky for this deck. Um, but we also see Flash Counter, and I think Flash Counter is really cool. Flash Counter is one uh, blue and one, an instant that says counter target instant spell, right? And remember, interrupts are now also instants. So you can use this basically to protect your Underworld Dreams from disenchants, right? That's the main thing you want to do. Um, and I really like the flavor text. I'm just going to read it to you because I just like it so much. She grinned at me, a wicked grin. I hope you weren't relying too heavily on that, my dear. Medrin Silverwand, Diary. So what I love about this specific flavor text is kind of 
when, when you read this, you can imagine this wizard duel going on. And wizards are just cunning and mean, you know. That's what we are, right? So we're like smiling like, I know, I just blocked your main move, you know. Uh, but anyway, Flash Counter, also great art. I really like the art. And uh, it's interesting. Again, it's a card you don't see often. So I'm just, I'm always loving these cards when I see them in decks and I can just take them out and discuss them with you guys. So please, you know, keep playing these type of cards, people, because I absolutely love it. Uh, there are also some really cool cards in the sideboard, but I'm going to leave that up to you. Maybe you don't recognize that one card from the dark. Go look it up. It's pretty funny. Anyway, uh, this is the list of Remco. Now let's take a look at the list of his opponent, Ron. And here we see the deck that Ron brought to the tournament today, a line dip bolt. So we've seen this deck in action before. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward deck, right? You want to play your cheap creatures, your Savannah Lines, your Iron Claw Orcs, your Serenips. There are not even that many creatures in here. And the rest is just to burn. And then you've got all the amazingly good restricted cards and power cards. You know, you've got your Ancestral Recall, you've got your Time Walk, you know, you've got your Balance in case. I mean, this deck usually doesn't have a lot of creatures on board, so your Balance could be nice. Or when you're getting Mind Twisted, Balance is also a nice top deck. Talking about Mind Twist, of course, that card is in here as well. Together with your Demonic Tutor, the two usual suspects uh, from Black. Yeah, this is just really a tier one deck that wants to do one thing, win the game, you know, win as quickly as possible. And yeah, th that's what it is. And it, it What it shows here, by the way, is how good Savannah Lines is, right? Because he's playing a full play set of those. Um, and also, uh, how good that we, of course, already know Disenchant is, right? I mean, it's probably the best common in the game. Having that ability at instant speed to, you know, destroy an enchantment or an artifact, just giving those options. If it would just be uh, destroy an artifact, it would be like a Shatter, right? In a way, this card would have been more, you know, fair, but I love the fact that old school is not fair, don't get me wrong. If Disenchant would say destroy target enchantment, because then you had a Disenchant for enchantments, right? It also says Disenchant, and then you would have a Shatter for artifacts, which makes more sense in red anyway, because it's more a smash color, so you smash the trinkets, right? Um, but that's just an interesting thought I, I, I had lately, just like that you also have a red Disenchant. So what do you think I call the red Disenchant? Okay, I gave you some time to think. So for me, that is Fisher, And Fisher is also an instant, right? Two red and three. And it says uh, destroy target land or creature. Can you imagine? It's buried, by the way, so it's even better. Can you imagine if it would cost one red and one? It would be so heavily played. It would be too good as well. I, I agree. But it would be nice if this card would have been two red and one instant speed. That would be really sweet. Anyway, I'm just thinking about like how close like cards can be together. And I, I, I feel because you have two options here as well, destroy a land or a creature, right? Or bury, I should say, um, you know, that it's comparable with Disenchant. And of course, Disenchant being the staple and a lot better because of that cheap mana cost. I mean, one white and one is insane. And of course, because it's only one white and the casting cost is super easy to splash, right? So what if they would have made Fisher one red and two or one red and three i mean then i would probably see more and more play in these type of decks as well anyway i'm getting a little bit off topic this is the deck of ron we looked at the deck of remco that means we are ready let's go to a round number six of the knights of thorn the 10th edition game number one here we go remco sitting on the left with his underworld dreams deck so it's white black and blue playing against ron with his align dip bolt deck Lots of burn there, and of course, Savannah Alliance. Oh, Loa, turn one. Here we go. So already uh, quite a problem after the first turn here for them, go that Loa. And uh, yeah, Ron here probably just gonna pass, I assume, or maybe if he has a Mox, he can use the Loa. And it looks like Remco, he drew maybe a card too many, so I guess the, they're talking about that. And I mean, this is the nice thing about old school. We've got this rule where it says, just don't be a dick, meaning just be nice to each other, be kind to each other. And when you're playing against each other, talk about it amongst each other. Sometimes you would ask, you know, the community for a rule, you know. Um, but yeah, it's very relaxed. So here the players kind of solve the issue themselves. And here is the Mox Sapphire being played out by, uh, by Ron. So he had a Mox in hand. And then of course you do want to draw the extra card in your own main. Here we see a Dark Ritual. Okay, are we going to see Underworld Dreams? Yeah, this is a fantastic response, of course, to that Loa. Because now every time Ron draws an extra card, it's going to also cost him an extra life. Which, you know, it may seem it's worth paying that extra life. But how long can you keep that up? The downside here, of course, of Remco's deck is that he's not very good at putting any other pressure 
on you know Ron's life total. So hopefully for him, he can actually play another Underworld Dreams next turn. Now then it's really gonna go quick. Because I'm expecting Ron to just keep using the Loa for now because one life for a card is still a really good deal. Playing a bad lance here, by the way. So there's a tap exactly. Going to go here to 18. Draw another card. I think what I also like in the Underworld Dreams decks, but then we're maybe going to more like your, your traditional Underworld Dreams decks is where you also add a vice. Now we see a Demonic Tutor. So I wonder if he's just going to tutor for a Disenchant here. He's going to perhaps, you know, just get rid of the uh, Underworld Dreams. Now, interesting here to notice as well that he doesn't have any... A two blue at the moment or any white mana at the moment so it really depends of course on what he has in hand uh, what he's going to look up so Ron shuffling here he's not passing the turn yet so maybe he got like a black lotus and wants to do something uh, in his main here still they're putting the deck away so he already had his land drop He's got that Badlands, Mox Sapphire, and the Library of Alexandria. Remember, Remco was on the on the play. He's actually going to discard here, so discarding a Mishra's Factory, passing the turn. And I think it would be really cool for Remco if he can now have a Flesh Counter to protect the Underworld Dreams. That would be really solid. So he's got 7, probably going to draw here, going to take a damage. 17. What I usually do is put one of my dice on my deck so I don't forget the triggers. It's so easy to forget. Like I sometimes see in the comments, people are like, he is cheating. No, just trust me. They're, they're just forgetting, you know. This is very, uh, the old school community is a very low-key community, even at tournaments. And here we see uh, a dual land. I believe this is a Tundra, if I'm looking at the text box, white and blue. So that gives him access to Disenchant. And I think Ron is now realizing that he forgot to first draw or not. No, because he went to eight, of course, after the draw. So then now he's going back up to eight after playing that land. Yeah, that makes sense. I thought because he took a moment that maybe there was something there. Ooh, we see a divine offering here. Hmm, I wonder why he's doing that now. You could also do that end step because now we're going to see a disenchant. Exactly. And you don't, I mean, maybe Adamco doesn't even have a flash counter, but now you, you can't even play it out or pretend you have counter magic. Yeah, this is bad. For Adamco needs to get the Underworld Dreams. He's got another copy in hand, though. Ooh, that is really sweet. Should play it out now. Oh, he's going to go for the Howling Mine. Is that I believe I saw another copy, right? Or is that not an Underworld Dreams? I guess it isn't, or else he would have played it out. So he's going to go for the Howling Mine. Yeah, and this is, this is risky, right? Because now Ron's going to draw four cards. No, three cards. I shouldn't exaggerate. Three cards, two from the Howling Mine and one from the library. So, oh, it's a Dancing Scimitar. Yeah, I thought that was uh, Underworld Dreams. Dancing Scimitar and Swords to Plowshares. So it's really just saying, I'm going to play the Howling Mine. Hopefully, I'm going to draw into another Underworld Dreams. And I get that because the longer you wait, um, the bigger the chances that you're going to lose. So you have to take this, this risk because the Library of Alexandria is on board. If Ron wouldn't have had the Library, of course you wouldn't have played the Howling Mine at this point in the game. There we see a discard of the city and a pass. Now two cards for Demko. Let's see what he can dig up there. It's another Swords to Plowshares. And normally Swords are great cards to have, but right now you just want to find something else. Going to tap... Four, so we're probably going to see the Dancing Scimitar here. There's the Scimitar. Yeah, really nice to see these cards. Again, a card that doesn't see a lot of play. It's actually not that bad. So he won five here. So at least he can start poking Ron a little bit. And I think that's really all Remco uh, can do here, right? He's tapped out, passing the turn. Are we going to see Disenchant end step? No, a counter spell actually. Okay. So countering it away. So it's scary enough for Ron to counter. I'm a little bit surprised that you would counter this, to be honest. But maybe it shows how many counter spells he's got in hand. You know, if he's got more than enough and he doesn't want to discard. Because normally you would say, keep your counter magic for the Underworld Dreams. Although he also has disenchants. Yeah, I mean, he's in such a good position drawing so many cards. Probably just doesn't want to discard. And let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to play another creature? First draw another card. Why not? Going to go to 8 in hand. 
Iron Claw Orc perhaps here, one retin one. Yep, there's the Iron Claw Orc, 2-2 two -two creature. And it cannot block creatures with a greater power than one. Because it's a coward, which is very flavorful. There's the other draws. Is that a demonic tutor there? I mean, it's going to be so tough though for Remco to kind of resolve his spells here. Because I cannot imagine if it's a tutor that he can get the tutor. Oh, strip mine. Okay, yep. At least taking care of the Library of Alexandria. That is something. So that is, I think that's that's more fun for the game, right? That the that the Loa is gone here. Tapping two, are we going to see the demonic? I mean, I'm expecting a counter spell here. Ooh, it's going to resolve. So this can mean two things. Oron just doesn't have the counter, which I I do think he has the counter spell. Or perhaps um, it means that um, that Ron says, you know what, I have the counter spell, but I'm just going to wait until you find something and I'm going to counter that. For example, an Underworld Dreams. Ooh, is that an abyss that you looked up? Yeah, interesting here. So planning to play that abyss. Of course, he doesn't have the mana now. I mean, abyss is abyss is a good card against uh, Ron's deck, I guess you know. But the problem is, Ron has so much burn. He can just you know think, you know what? I don't even need the creatures. I'm just going to burn you out. There, exactly here. The burn has started. There we see a psionic blast. Ron going down to 14, and Demko going down to 15. And now, of course, if Ron wants to, he can animate the factory attack with both. But remember, I believe Redemko has two Swords to Plowshares in hand. So I wonder if he really looked up that Abyss. Maybe I'm wrong again, because if you have two Swords in hand, the Abyss doesn't make a lot of sense. I think I would actually just look up an Underworld Dream, so maybe it was a Dreams. Anyway, we see a strip mine here on the maze. It does look like an Abyss, though. There's the animate, so it's going to go in here into the red zone for four. And I guess you would put a sword at least on the uh, factory, it's exactly. Taking care of the factory does give uh, Ron two more life. And two damage here for Remco, drop to 13. And then Remco, of course, is going to try to deploy the, uh, the Abyss next turn, then kill the Iron Claw that way. But it's, I mean, I just still wonder if Ron has counter magic in hand. He's got so many cards, but yeah, sometimes you just don't have it. Gonna tap one. What is that card? We can't see Ancestral Recall. Ooh. He is taking the risk. Oh no, oh no. Are we gonna see a counter spell? Oh, he's also gonna play his Ancestral Recall. Yeah, that is kind of funny. It would have been really cool to see a flesh counter against this Ancestral Recall. That would have been so nice. I'm just hoping to see these cards cleansing, flesh counter, you know. I'm just, I just hope that we can see that. We already saw Dancing Scimitars. I'm really happy with that. But yeah, so both players refilling their hand. I mean, he didn't have a land drop yet, right? So he could do land drop abyss. There's a tower. I mean, that's good too, I guess. The, the problem is next turn, Ron can untap and he can just keep two blue open for counter magic. Are we going to see another burn spell here? Yep, there he goes. And I mean, the tower is super good against the burn strategy. But I mean, he's got how many in hand? Five in hand. It is risky. Is he going to take two more from the Iron Claw? would go to seven. That means he's it, with a bolt and a psionic blast, the game would be over. That's the difficult thing about these decks like Ron's deck. You, you you have to deal with the creatures, you have to deal with all the counter magic, but you also have to deal with all the burn. And I keep talking about counter spells, by the way, but of course Ron's deck only has one counter spell and one mana drain, I believe. So that makes it even more surprising that he would counter the Dancing Scimitar. I think, I mean, Dancing Scimitar is good against his deck, I guess, because it's got five toughness, so it's hard to burn away, but you can still use your disenchants against it. But then again, I guess you want to use your disenchants against the enchantments. Yeah, so I guess I guess it made sense to counter it in a way. That's only one damage. Anyway, I'll let I'll let you guys decide. Here we see a chain, probably a psionic blast. And then the ride is already over. 
or not. I thought for a moment there he was casting a psionic blast. There he goes again. Could be a surrendip as well, of course. Let's hope it's a surrendip for Remco's sake. If it's a psionic blast, he is dead. Tapping a white. Okay, Savannah Lion. Okay, that's not too bad. This is actually really nice here for Remco. Now he can take a life, go back up to five, draw a card for turn, draw two cards actually. So he's got seven in hand, he's got double swords. The problem here is like, do you, if you play an abyss, because you've got your city, you would go to four, you don't want that to happen. Ooh, gonna play a land for turn, yeah, I get it, but... Then you play an abyss, but the, you, the problem is if you take two next turn, right, um, you will go to three. Four was already risky, but three is even more risky. I would be tempted here to just play out double swords, um, you know, for, this, for the simple fact that then you can stick on five. I mean, it may seem odd to do, but... Oh, he's got balance in hand. Wow. Balance is really good. Now we're probably going to see a bolt. Ooh, this will be risky because now he's on two anyway. And now the balance will resolve. This this balance was pretty good move. It's going to be really, really tough. I think here perhaps... Now, of course, you want to keep the city to have your options open. But, I mean, you're on two. I guess two and one doesn't matter that much. And Ron draws two. There is the Mistress Factory. Gonna tap a white. Savannah Lines hitting the board. Again, something not really that he has to worry for that much. There's a surrender. I mean, he's got the swords to deal with that. And of course, he wants to gain life first. Gonna untap, gonna gain some life. Look at him go, up to three, and then draw two cards. It kind of feels like Remco is playing on borrowed time, right? He's so low against his burn deck. But I'm, I'm liking it, I'm enjoying it. Try to see Remco get back into this. I mean, what you could do here is play a land, play the abyss. Keep one mana open for a swords on the other creature. I guess. You know, and then you're then you're yeah, you know, you're you're on two. Because you need to use your city for that. He's gonna tap three here though. Mm, yeah, gonna go to four instead. So probably gonna see the abyss here. There's the abyss. So the, I mean it, it's Remco, Remco is looking okay, you know, not fantastic, but okay. I mean, this is also interesting, right? I think if you're Remco and there wasn't a counterspell on the Abyss, I would have considered also playing your Swords main, um, because you're sure that your Swords is not going to get countered. If Ron here finds his Mana Drain, for example, and drains away your, your Swords, you're dead. It's the end of the road, right? It's probably the end of the road anyway, because there's so much burn in there. Anyway, there's the attack. Oh, and of course that factory can pump it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, that's a shame. That's three damage. Oh, that's a shame, Nemco. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not even showing the swords there. Gonna keep that information to himself. And now both players are now going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Nemco, of course, on the play after losing that first game. Let's see what he can do. I do see an ivory tower there in his opener. That would mean he would land tower, would go to five, pass turn, would gain one life from the tower at least. There we go, ivory tower. All the way under the life there, the dice. There we see Mishra's factory and a soul ring and a pass. Okay, so at least not a loa. One life gained, going up to 21. I mean, Tower is really good against these burn decks. I'm gonna play out another land, it seems. Another scrub land there. 
And there's the pass. Now, of course, Ron could consider attacking with the factory, but then it's always a risk that you run into a disenchanter of sorts. We see a duel and just a pass exactly like Ron, not taking that risk, makes sense. Another life here, gonna go up to 22. Drawing a card for turn. So he's got six in hand. There's a land drop. If it's gonna be, it's a swamp. So does he have an underworld dreams? That's the question. I mean, if he does, he would drop it. He would tap out. Then Ron could attack for two. And of course he wouldn't gain any life, but I think it's still worth it. Ooh, gonna go for Dark Ritual. Five in total. Ho, 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 a mind twist here for five. I didn't see that coming. Wow. And I believe, how many cards does Ron have in hand? Could be six. Because he played out the Soul Ring. So yeah, this is this is really tough here for, for Ron. Has to discard five cards. Or does he have a, a response to this? I mean, I don't think he does. I mean, you can in response play an instant like a disenchant, but he only plays with Mana Drain and Counterspell, and he only has one blue, I believe. The dual end there, I, I think it's a blue one. There he goes. So six cards. Okay. So, of course, it was a Mana Drain for four, because Mind Twist, of course, has a casting cost of one black as well. Anyway, really good play here with that Mana Drain uh, for four. I mean, it does mean that Ron kind of here has a free attack at least with the factory if he wants to. Tapping the Soul Ring. Yep, gonna animate the factory into a factory work. Ah. Oh, and he's gonna copy it. Wow, and then he can pump it straight away. A lot of people think if you copy the Mishra's factory that it comes into play as a 2-2 assembly worker. Actually, it can only copy the Mishra's factory if it's turned into an assembly worker because then it's an artifact creature. But the weird thing is if you then play or copy and copy it, it's actually just a land. And this is a really nice, uh, nice play here. And it's usually really risky to do against the white deck because as soon as you animate your factory and they disenchant, when you cast a copy, your copy needs to choose another target, right? But in this case, uh, Remco was, of course, tapped out. So this was the perfect timing here by Ron. And then we've seen Underworld Dreams, by the way, being played out by Remco. But I think that, ooh, another factory, because now he's got three factories moving into the red zone. I think if you're Remco, you really need Swords and Disenchants here. I mean, he's going to take five. And that is... That is tough, you know, so despite that uh, mind twist, it is difficult here for Remco because he's dropping to 14. And it's it's difficult to deal with Mishra's factories because, you know, um, your Wrath is not going to work, the Abyss is not going to work, you really need your Swords, your Disenchants, stuff like that. I mean, there and of course, Land Destruction. So going to take one damage here, of course, from the Dreams, going to go to 18. Another duel there. It looks like a volcanic. Tapping. Gonna animate everything here. Into the red zone. Six damage. We need to see a swords here. Or a disenchant. There's a tap. Divine offering. Okay, that's something. I guess a card that came in from the sideboard. So divine offering here. That means four damage. And I mean, if you're... If Emko, you're also really hoping to find, uh, for example, a draw seven, because that would make your ivory tower active and of course deal some damage to Ron and it can help you to find some more answers to those uh, factories. But I mean, he's on 10, he's got the soul ring. I'm not sure if I would play it out here, to be honest. But then again, I don't know what the other two cards are in hand. Looks like, is that a land? It's hard to see. Oh wow, that's a conversion. Does he have a conversion in hand? Is it called Conversion? I forgot, it's the enchantment from white, two white and two, and it turns all the mountains into plains. Wow. And he's got a flash counter. Yeah, I think I would have kept the soaring in hand maybe. Oh, it's so cool to see that card. I hope you can play it out, Remco, I really do. I mean, he can swing in here for four. You're going to put him on three. Uh, it's not looking good. Animating attacking here. You see them go, oh, darn it. 
<laughs> but it's actually better. I mean, he could have taken more damage. He only animates one. He's on five. I wonder what else he wants to do. Tapping four. What are we going to see for four? There's a Suchi. Ooh, if he still would have had the Divine... Um, hopefully he draws into a Divine Offering. And uh, yes, I'm really rooting here for Remco because I'm just really hoping that um, that he'll be able to, to get back into this. But it's looking really bad. It looks like he's just going to die. Here he's on five. There's eight damage next turn on board. There's the pass. There's, there's nothing in his hand, I believe. A flash counter, the conversion, and another card. With the white border, I cannot identify. Could even be a land. There's the animate. Gonna attack here. If he's got, if one of those cards is a swords or a disenchant or divine offering or something, he can stay alive. But no, that's not. That's the end of the road. That means that Ron is winning here, and um, you know, very convincing here with an 0-2 victory for Ron. And yeah, his his deck is super strong. What else can I say? Oh, what I do want to say though is the good news is these players played another game. So please stick around because we're just gonna go to game three, and I'm hoping to see some cool cards from Remco in that game. Keeping my fingers crossed. Game number three here for the funsies. And of course, I'm hoping, Nemco, that you get to play cleansing. Show us cleansing. Anyway, Remco is on the play. Let's see if he keeps the hand. He does. There's a scrubland passing the turn. No tower this time. There's a duel. There's a mox. Ironclaw orcs turn one, two, two. Ready to attack. There's an underground C, and there's the pass. So we're just going to have to wait and see. The attack for two. The interesting thing here is, by the way, uh, because we are in round six, that Ron is playing against Remco. Kind of shows that Remco is doing quite well. I mean, he must have had some nice wins as well. So Remco, let us know in the, the comments below. There's the surrender, by the way, being played out by Ron. Because in the, um, in the first... The, the group stage of the tournament always works with the Swiss system. And the Swiss system means that if you're not familiar with it, then you kind of play against opponents that also had a win or also had a loss. So it's kind of balanced out that way. So the fact that Remco and Ron are playing against each other kind of shows that they're pretty close with the points. Here we see a really nice balance, by the way. Taking care of both creatures does probably mean that Remco has to disenchant something. Let's see. Because of course, Ron and uh, played the two creatures, but also the Mox, Sapphire. So it's discarding two lands there, it seems, passing the turn. There's the draw. Ron tapping three, another Surrendip, another Surrendip. But I think I saw a maze in the hand of Remco, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or, or not, is that another card? I guess it's not a maze or else he would have played it out. Although maybe he prefers to do this. This is really nice when you have your Underworld Dreams in combination there with the Surrendip because now he takes two damage. Yeah, I guess he doesn't have a maze in hand there. That, I, that was a mistake. Anyway, attack for three. Gonna drop to 15. There's a Suchi. Ooh, this is tough. A lot of pressure by Ron again. Is that a cleansing in hand? Oh yeah, there is the mace. Okay, so I wasn't mistaken. There is a mace. Tapping three more. Oh, time twister. Oh, 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 I love this. And this means with that Underworld Dreams on board, Ron's gonna take another seven. And of course, he's got his own surrender and he's drawing. Right now we're seeing you know, Remco's deck doing something. I'm excited about this. The only thing that I, that, I, that I regret a little bit is that we still haven't seen a cleansing. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I'm, I keep hoping for a cleansing. So seven new cards. And of course, I mean, it's, it's, it's mega dangerous because you're, you're now giving Ron a fresh pair of, of cards for seven life. You know, so it's, uh, it's risky. But that's the name of the game, I guess. But it's always fun to see these draw sevens. And Emko, of course, already had his land drop, so just has to pass here. And now he's going to drop to nine. One damage from the Surrender, but one damage from the Underworld Dreams. And I remember this when I play with, with for example, my Timmy deck with the Protocol Sorcerer. If you have, have a Protocol Sorcerer and, for example, an Icy Manipulator to tap down the City of Brass of your opponent all the time, then it really starts to hurt. When you can deal two damage instead of one, that really makes a big difference. So he can attack here, I guess, for seven if he wants to. Let's 
see what he's going to do. There's a Mishra's factory. Going to go into the red zone. Going to send back probably to Suchi. Going to take three, going to drop to 12. The maze is going to stick though. There's a chain lightning, going to drop to nine. I mean, this is as to be expected. There's so much burn in that deck. Is he going to pass or not? Does he even have more burn? I mean, on nine, if you play a side blast, it would go down to five. So I guess this is this is good news. If you're Remco, um, and I think for Remco, I'm not sure now if I remember if there were spirit links in the sideboard because that would be a nice inclusion against these uh, surrender decks. And also in in, in Remco's general, um, you know, tactics with this deck strategy, I mean, because he is going quite slow, so spirit link would kind of fit the bill. So what can he do? There's a, again a flash counter in hand there, I believe, to protect the Underworld Dreams. Haven't seen a single flash counter yet, so it would be nice to see that card in action as well. Tapping a black. There's a soul ring. What would be really nice now, by the way, is if you could find one of those two dancing scimitars. Okay, so he's going to draw and take a damage, drop to seven. <laughs> Go, Demko, you can do it. I would. I hope one of those cards in his hand is a Divine Offering. He could play Divine Offering on Suchi, take care of a creature and gain four life. Like, that would be huge. He would go back up to 13. Because the problem here is there's so much burn in that deck of Ron. You know, you're on nine, but it's actually quite low against Ron's deck. And I can tell from experience... how difficult it is to play against these decks and to play against Ron. So Ron playing here, Demonic Tutor. Ooh, we could play Flash Counter! Or not, no, it's a Sorcery, of course. Flash Counter doesn't work on Sorcery. Dang! Why couldn't they have made Flash Counter a little bit better? Would, have, would it have been that bad to say it also works against Sorceries? Would it have been that bad? Would it have been overpowered? I don't think so. Anyway, we'll just have to wait and see. At least he can flesh counter away a psionic blast. He can flesh counter away a lightning bolt. I didn't even think about it. I was just so focused on a disenchant. Maybe Ron is now looking up a disenchant. Or perhaps a strip mine to get rid of the, uh, of the factory. I guess neither because he's swinging in here. Okay, he's going to tap. Something's going to happen. Oh, a Divine Offering! That is great! I think in response to the a Demonic, I would have played Divine Offering. Then again, you've got your Flash Counter to counter a Counterspell. Oh, he's going to gain four! Yeah, look at him go! I'm sorry, I'm really rooting here for the Underdog. I hope you don't mind, Ron. But I just want to see more of his deck. Use your Mace! Exactly. Yeah, this is really nice. This is old school for me, right? I mean, Ron could have thought, you know what? I just want to take the damage and he forgets his maze sucker, but he's helping. Then you're saying, you got the maze, man. Use the maze. That's really old school. That's the spirit of the game. And I have to confess, I think if it was a final, I probably wouldn't have done it. I think. Oh, no flesh counter? Disenchant, no flesh counter? So is that blue card then not a flesh counter? Is it just me wishful thinking that it is a flesh counter? Yeah, it's a flesh counter! What a king! I think he had the mana to play flesh counter. Oh, I lo I'm loving this game. You had the mana for the flesh. I'm probably asking, did we have the mana for the flesh counter? I think he did. And now he untaps, exactly. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I think they asked the stream at the time, did he have the mana? The answer was yes. Oh, man. I love it. I love seeing these cards, man. It just puts a smile on my face. Flesh counter in action. 
There we see a strip mines is gonna strip. I mean, it's it's looking good for Emko, honestly. You know, he's on 11. Now we're gonna see double damage again for Ron, gonna drop to five. And Emko there kind of forgot his island in his excitement, probably. And I mean, he doesn't really have a good attack here because, because of that maze. There's another factory, so that's pressure for next turn, but that's not going to be enough, though. He's on like a three-turn clock at the moment. Gonna tap four, maybe a Suchi. Ooh, a Mind Twist. Ooh, but do I see a Mana Drain there? Of course you want to play the Mana Drain here. Why not? It's better to discard it. Mana Drain. Counterspell on Mana Drain. Ooh, so he's protecting it. And he's going to lose two cards. But more importantly here, actually, is that Ron also is losing his um, his Counterspell. Remember, he only plays one Counterspell and one Mana Drain. So here he's taking double damage again. Going to go to three. It's risky, though. I mean, this deck of Remco is really cool, but it's hard work. Like It's difficult to win with this deck because it, it deals so little damage. So you really got to play the control game well. Probably going to see an animator of the factory just swinging in here, trying to put two damage at least in. Or does he have better options? Going to tap four. I mean, Ron, Ron has got one more turn after this, you know? So he has to put Remco from 11 to zero in two turns. That's basically the situation here. I'm really happy you guys played this third game, by the way, because it's just really interesting to see to see this match, to see this game here, to see kind of Remco's deck doing what it wants to do. There's the tap, so there's the anime, there's the attack for five. Yeah, gonna send back the surrender, of course, take two, drop to nine. But I mean, this is not gonna be enough. He needs some... He can, I mean, 9 is still pretty close with all the burn that he has. Like, if he's got, for example, a Psionic Blast, he could put him to 5, pass the turn, and then next turn, if he has a Bolt, he can put him on 3 and then kill him. Drawing a card here for turn. So, two cards in hand for Remco. Another Flash Counter. That's actually really good. Or is it not a Flash Counter? It's a Recall. Ooh, that's even better. Playing a recall here, of course, he only has one card in hand. I would get the flash counter back. <laughs> oh, he's doing, of course, I'm so, I'm so bad at magic. He had the time twister in the graveyard, of course. I didn't, I forgot that. Are we going to see red elemental blast here? I hope not. We're going to see a bolt. Okay, okay, fair enough. Going to go to six. Oh, man. And then he's going to die. He is dead. Dead to the uh, Time Twister here. I'm not really sure why they're shuffling. I mean, is there a chance that you stack it that if you find a... Di oh, yeah, of course. If you find a Disenchant, you can play it out. Or is it more... No, it's not because it's on the stack. Wait, what? The reason they're shuffling here is if um, Ron finds enough burn at instant speed... He can burn out Remco here. That's why they're doing this, I believe. Right, so they're going to draw. Nope, that's not it. He's on one. And he's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the scenario that could have happened here is that his first card would be a bolt. He could bolt. Second card would be a bolt. He could bolt. And then um, Ademko would have died. So it's really nice that the players here are showing it. Um, I guess another thing that could have happened is he could have drawn Disenchant, Disenchant it. Right? I think it works that way. I think. Question mark, question mark. But then he can, he can Disenchant the Underworld Dreams, and then the Underworld Dreams is out of the game. Anyway, uh, what a fun game three. And uh, just, just nice to see... Also, Remco win. The only thing is we didn't see cleansing. So I guess, Remco, you have to bring this deck with you to the next Old School Magic event where I will be uh, as well, right? Or we can just play online or something. But it's really cool 
the CDS deck. Thank you for bringing it to the table. And of course, congratulations to Ron here for winning in round number six of the Knights of Thorn. And next week, we are going to start with the quarterfinals of this tournament. So the first top eight match. Now, if you don't want to miss that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the show. Talking about supporting the, uh, the show, you can also leave a like, a comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. So if you do that, thank you very much for that. Talking about that, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks, how you can support the channel. And it already starts with just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. And your name will be mentioned at the end of every video in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.